Make these by Dallas, make it hurt. MacBook Air has always been Apple's entry-level laptop that will suit anyone with light tasks like browsing internet, making presentations, a Netflix machine, but it changed with Apple decisions to put a similar iPad-based chip called M1, and they are so confident to even remove the fan from the MacBook Air. Many people were skeptical about this change as this is the same processor as iPhone and iPad, a mobile-class processor, but not even near the desktop-class processor. Well. Apple actually has been testing this concept with iPad. It is true that iPad these days can handle a lot more, and now it is their first attempt to use it on a MacBook. And I must say, I'm quite impressed. And since they are using their mobile class processor, one feature that they are bringing is instant on. The moment that you open your MacBook, it wakes up and ready to use. Previous MacBook Air has not always been good with heavy tasks such as video editing, image processing, or even developing an app. But now, even with the lack of fan, M1 MacBook Air has been able to do this for me. My last video for GMMK keyboard was shot in 1080p and edited from M1 MacBook Air, and it handled it with no sweat. This M1 MacBook Air is so impressive that I even decided to install Steam and try to install Dota 2. And it managed to handle Dota 2 with high graphic at lobby, idle at 120 FPS. And then when I tried to use this Invoker Hero which has many skills and tried to spam as many skills as I can with this hero, on average it managed to be around 80 FPS, so it's a quite good performance for gaming. And to remind you again, this game is not even optimized for M1 chip. It is still running under Apple's translation software called Rosetta 2 to help decode the x86 that is usually used for Intel-based machines, not ARM. And as you can see here, I put all the highest setting except VSync turned off and it's still running well. Now to remind you again, this is a fanless machine. It uses a heat spreader to cool it off, not even a vapor chamber, like many premium gaming laptops out there. My solution to help increase the performance is to use the laptop cooling fan. Another great thing that Apple have improved on this MacBook Air is no touch bar and the scissor switch keyboard. I really like it when my finger has the muscle memory to hit the perfect key for brightness music control without having to look at the keyboard, but this is a subjective opinion in my case. Apple has also changed the keyboard layout a little bit. Now we have a spotlight button, dictations, and do not disturb. I don't find myself using the spotlight search button a lot because I'm so used to with the command space combinations, but the dictations and do not disturb is a great addition. Also the globe key for the language switch is now moved with the FN button. Now let's hear the sound test for this MacBook Air keyboard. There are many great things about this MacBook Air that I don't even think about the MacBook Pro. No fan means it always silent and more or less failure in mechanical moving component. No touch bar means lesser money involved if it is broken. Performance is almost similar to MacBook Pro. Sound and microphone quality is top tier. Trackpad is best in class. But there are downsides too. M1 MacBook Air only have two USB 4 ports with no eGPU support for now. I wish Apple had this port on both sides, so I have the option to plug whether on the left or right side. Second downside, you can only connect to one external display up to 6K resolution at 60Hz. But in my workflow, I require two displays, so what I did here is to use my iPad as a third screen. The display also not bright enough for outdoor use, but at least you get P3 white color gamut. And the camera. 
Even though Apple tells us that it has new image processing software improved, it is still a 720p camera. I don't really mind the bezel around the MacBook Air, but the camera is really Overall, bad. Overall, with this pandemic going on and many virtual meetings happening, camera is one of the important aspects when choosing a laptop other than performance. I will definitely recommend people to choose M1 MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro because there is no significant performance upgrades and you could use the money to upgrade RAM or memory since it is now part of the chip itself and non-upgradable by users. And here is my recommendations. If you really want to upgrade your laptop, let's wait for the 14-inch MacBook Pro with M1X chips. As with the current lineup, it doesn't make sense to choose MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air. And thank you guys for watching. If you really want to see this kind of video and review again, let me know down in the comment below and don't forget to subscribe and like this video.